Now that we're talking about profit and how to maximize profit, it's helpful to think about how we can actually represent profit graphically on the same graphs that we have our cost curves on. In order to do this, it's going to be helpful for us to manipulate this profit equation a little bit to show something that has a natural interpretation on our graphs. So to do this, we can notice that profit is just equal to total revenue minus total costs. So total revenue is just price times quantity, like we said before. And here, total cost, well all I've done here is I divided by Q and then I multiplied by Q. So I haven't changed this value of total cost at all, I've just represented it in a slightly different way. Well, we'll notice that this is equal to average cost or average total cost times quantity. So we can say that profit is equal to price times quantity minus average total cost times quantity. Now that we have our profit in this form here, we can factor out a Q. And we can say that profit is equal to quantity times price minus average total cost. So we can think of profit as how much output we're producing. And we can think of this price minus average total cost figure as sort of our average markup over cost. So just by how much our price is exceeding our average cost of production. And this is going to give us something that has a natural interpretation on our graph, so we can see how to represent that graphically. As an example, let's say that our average total cost looks like this here. We said our average total cost is usually U-shaped, so this seems like it makes sense. And let's say that our company is producing at a price here and a quantity here. We'll come back and talk specifically about how companies set this price and quantity, but for now let's just take it as given and show how to graphically represent the corresponding level of profit. So here, if we're saying that profit is equal to quantity times price minus average total cost, we could represent profit on our diagram by a rectangle whose width is quantity and whose height is price minus average total cost simply because the area of a rectangle is just length times width, or the two dimensions of the rectangle multiplied together. So what you'll notice here is if we were to draw a rectangle that looks like this, this shaded area here would be our profit simply because the width of our rectangle, because our rectangle goes from 0 to Q, <coughs> the width of our rectangle is just Q. And because the height of our rectangle, or the length, or however you want to define these dimensions, goes from average total cost to price, you can see average total cost here and price here, we can say that the other dimension of our rectangle is price minus average total cost. So then it makes sense that the area of this rectangle is just this dimension times this dimension, which is in fact exactly what we had for profit here. Alternatively, we could look at this profit equals total revenue minus total cost definition directly and think about how to represent that graphically. In that case, we would get the following. Well, if total revenue is just price times quantity, then total revenue is going to be equivalent to a rectangle whose one dimension is quantity and the other dimension is price. So here, we could think of our revenue as this whole rectangle here to shade him like this. And we can see that this whole rectangle is going to be our revenue because our horizontal dimension, we're going from 0 to Q. So the width of our rectangle is just Q. And the height of our rectangle, well, we're going from 0 to P. So the height of our rectangle is P, giving an area of P times Q. Now, if we wanted to represent 
profit, we're not only going to have to show total revenue, but we're going to have to subtract out total cost. So we can think about how to represent total cost. Well, we said total cost was just average total cost times quantity. So what we could do is we could construct a rectangle with one dimension as quantity and the other dimension as average total cost. Well, since the average total cost that corresponds with this quantity is right here, we could draw a rectangle that looks like this. I'll just shade this one in the other direction. And we could see that this second rectangle here represents total cost because one dimension of our rectangle is just quantity and the other dimension of our rectangle is just average total cost. Average total cost times quantity equals total cost. So if we wanted to show total revenue minus total cost, it would just be the area of this big, re big rectangle here minus the area of this smaller rectangle here. So our profit rectangle would be this guy here, which you'll notice is exactly the same thing as what we calculated up here. So this is just another way of showing the same thing. Both of these methods give the same answer. We said before that it was entirely possible for a firm to have negative profits, and not surprisingly, we refer to these negative profits as losses. And as it turns out, we can show losses graphically in much the same way as we showed profits graphically, with one minor change. So now, let's say hypothetically that our firm is producing a quantity Q here, and is selling its product at a price P here. The relationship still holds that profit is equal to quantity times price minus average total cost. But the problem that we're going to see here is that when we're, more, when we're making negative profits, it's because our price is actually less than average total cost, meaning that on average our price is not high enough to cover our cost of production. But nonetheless, we can think about how to construct a rectangle that uses these quantities. Here, I still notice that one dimension of my rectangle, well, I want to go from 0 to Q, so it makes sense to start here. And the other dimension of my rectangle will go up from here to the corresponding average total cost for my quantity of production. But what we'll notice is that rather than this positive distance being price minus average total cost, this positive difference is actually going to be average total cost minus price, simply because average total cost is the bigger one in this case. So now if I were to draw this rectangle like this, the area of this rectangle is equal to quantity times average total cost minus price, which mathematically speaking is just the negative of quantity times price minus average total cost, which is just negative profit. Now we said that negative profits were just losses. So we can say that this rectangle here represents the amount of loss that this firm is making because its price is not high enough to cover its average total cost. Again, we could also show this by looking at total revenue and total cost directly. Again, our total revenue is just price times quantity. So that's going to be represented by a rectangle whose one dimension is quantity, and whose other dimension is price. So if we were going to think about total revenue, we would get this rectangle here. Now, again, total cost is equal to 
average total cost times quantity. So that's just going to be a rectangle where one dimension is quantity and the other dimension is average total cost. So the average total cost corresponding to this production quantity is here. So then it stands to reason that our total cost is represented by the area of this whole big rectangle here simply because the width of this big rectangle is still Q and the height of this rectangle is average total cost. So our total cost is this whole bigger rectangle here. And what you notice with what's left over here, that the area of what's left over in this small part here in this case is actually equal to total cost minus total revenue. Since it was total cost that was the bigger rectangle and total revenue that was the smaller rectangle. So here we can say that the area is equal to the negative of total revenue minus total cost, right? So we can say the area is negative total revenue minus total cost, or the area is the negative of profit. And again, since losses are just negative profits, we can say that, as before, the area of this rectangle represents the amount of losses that a firm is making. And what we'll see is when we're talking about this idea of profit maximization, we can, when a firm is making positive profits, it's pretty obvious that we're talking about profit maximization. When it's not possible for a firm to make positive profits, what we're actually going to be thinking about is a concept of loss minimization, in which case these sorts of diagrams become relevant.